Welcome back to another video. I am the architect and I am here to help navigate your uh, building of a fun immersive treasure scavenger hunt. Today I'm going to talk about difficulty and wrestling with this concept and how to try to find that fine line uh, between not making it too easy and not making it too difficult. Before we get started, I would love to thank uh, some of my patrons on patreon.com. Uh, Rose P and Tim M. Thank you guys so much for uh, contributing money all the way from Australia to help me continue to make these videos, uh, keep the subreddit going, Discord channel, all of those things. So thank you so much. Uh, if you want to become a patron, you can head over to patreon.com slash constructed adventures. And I've got two tiers, one that's simple, fun, just I want to support you. And one that gives you a couple goodies every month, things that I print out, make available uh, a little bit more. So anyway, without further ado, let's talk difficulty. I want to break this down into two different segments. The first segment is going to be for people that are building adventures for individual players. Maybe it's for a proposal, maybe it's for your kid or kids. You know, you can glump them in a small group of people. But this is for something very specific, very intimate. And then the second one is going to be on a broader scale. It's going to be if you are trying to build an escape room, or maybe you are doing a giant puzzle hunt for your birthday and there's 20, 30, 40 people that are going to be in teams. Because you might want to tackle these different. Not to say that they're completely different, but there's a little bit more focus. So without further ado, let's talk about the single serving adventure, the linear adventure, and how you're going to determine difficulty. When you're doing a small adventure for someone, for a proposal or something immersive for a significant other kids, the, the big thing is to remember one of my top 10 rules, and that's know your player. I interviewed Eric Berlin, who is a professional puzzle maker. He's done the New York Times crossword puzzle. He's brilliant. And he had a really great quote on this. And that was, doing crossword puzzles is kind of like learning a language. The first time you do a crossword puzzle, you're going to be bad at it. And then the more you do it, you're going to get better and better. And it doesn't have as much to do with knowing the answer or not, right? Who was this famous actress in 1974? What is this? What is that? It's more or less about being able to navigate how crossword puzzles break down. And that's the same thing with all puzzles. Puzzles are like a language. People will be like, I'm not good at puzzles. And it's like, well, yeah, because you haven't done any, right? The first step to being good at something is being bad at it. And you have to acknowledge this, that you might be super into puzzles. The person that you're doing this adventure for might not be. And if they aren't, you're going to have to make it easier because what's easy for you isn't easy for them. Here's a great example. I love the movie National Treasure. It is my favorite movie, unsurprisingly. One of the big puzzle ciphers is the Ottendorf cipher or book cipher. You can actually see my little one minute tutorial uh, if you'd like to get an idea. But essentially, you're just using numbers to pull letters out of text, right? It's indexing. I know this because I've seen National Treasure and also I do this for a living, so it's very different. If you want to incorporate an Ottendorf cipher in your adventure, which I recommend because it's fun for the player and it's easy for you and it frees up a little bit of time to maybe put out fires further down the road, you have uh, different possibilities when it comes to encoding it. If they have never seen National Treasure, if they've never done a puzzle hunt, if they've never done anything, you probably want to err on the side of having the numbers and say, this is an Ottendorf cipher. You're going to need to find the key and then maybe have some fun, easy puzzle to send them to a plaque or a page in a book or some paragraph of text. So everything kind of makes sense, right? Because if they've never seen it before, they might just have no idea what to do. And now the thing's muddled up, they have to ask you for help and it's not fun for anybody. But maybe the night before the adventure, you're like, hey, let's watch National Treasure. They see National Treasure and they see Nick Cage, Ben Gates, uh, decoding a message with the Declaration of Independence and they know. And so the next day their brain's already like, ah, I've seen that before, I've got it. And now you don't have to do a an explainer on what this is. You can let them already take the piece of information they know and deduce it. 
I recommend always erring on the side of making this too easy. I feel like I always have a wrestling match with people on my subreddit that ask questions that are always like, well, if it's too easy, it's not gonna be fun. Like, no, it'll still be fun. If you are surprising someone with an adventure, it will be fun. You don't need difficulty to increase fun. Just the surprise alone will make this a day they're never gonna forget. The puzzles are just like, extra. It's just a little bit of extra flavoring to make it a little bit more exciting and give those great dopamine hits of success. But if you surprise them with the day and then just hit them over the head constantly with puzzle after puzzle that's brutal and muddled and difficult, you have a chance that they just give up because they're like, it's not worth it. This isn't fun. Uh, and then you have a chance that they never want to do this again. But if you make it too easy, then you can ramp up the difficulty with the next ones. Most of the time when people do recaps on the subreddit, when I ask what went really well and what didn't, they always say the same thing. And that is, when something didn't go well, it's because instructions weren't clear enough or they made something too difficult. So just please understand this. Difficulty matters and that you will definitely run the risk of making things more difficult instead of too easy. So please err on that side. Let's bring it to the other part of creating difficulty, and that works a little bit more with large group games. If you are doing something for an escape room, right, where you are hoping to have hundreds of people do, or maybe it's a giant puzzle hunt where you're gonna have 20, 40, 50, 80 people, you have other things to take into account. One is you're gonna have them in groups, in teams, and more people means there's a higher chance of them beating a game. If you're doing an alternate reality game, an ARG online, you can make it brutal and difficult because it's if it gets popular enough, you have a hive mind of people working through it. Uh, the Mr. Beast ARG is a really good example. He thought that thing was gonna take months to do, but there was somebody in there that literally built a script algorithm that could decode everything and it was beaten in 10 hours. It was also very poorly constructed and kind of frustrating and just dumb the way it was done. Don't do what he did. But to put that in perspective, you can't make something brutally difficult for one person unless you are absolutely sure that they have that information. Not everybody knows what base 64 is, and it's something I don't recommend doing for an individual hunt, but it was used in the latest Cryptex hunt, and plenty of teams beat it because eventually somebody got it, right? And people just know. It's one of those things that if you do a lot of puzzles, you're like, maybe it's base 64. Let's run it through the algorithm that we have on our phone or something like that, and it works. All this to say, you can make things more difficult with large groups of people, uh, and the way to determine difficulty that I like to do with large groups, but also small, uh, came from an interview I did with Rita Orlov. She is the absolute brilliance behind Post Curious, which is a puzzle tale company. Uh, she created an award-winning game called Tale of Ord, uh, which is kind of the gold standard for, you know, escape room in a box. She likes to call them puzzle tales. I agree with her. Uh, and she has an upcoming game called Emerald Flame, which I am super hyped to play as soon as it gets here. She talked about difficulty in a really cool way. Uh, she starts with the full picture and then she slowly pulls out bits of information until she tries to find that sweet spot where it's not immediate, but it's not just like hit yourself in the head for two hours until you figure it out. And it's tricky, but the way you do that is start with the full picture and then find clever ways to remove information without making it too muddled. And then of course, play test. If you're gonna do something, especially for a large group, but you should in general, play test. Errol Illumier, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right because you wouldn't tell me how to pronounce it when I talked to you on Discord. He wrote a great blog uh, about escape rooms and his rule number 12 was, your puzzles are too hard. Play test and change. But it is really fun when play testing to write down different ideas that people have about how to solve because it might be a really cool mechanic either in that puzzle or something later. All of this to recap, the most important thing to keep in mind is that there's a good chance that your puzzles are just too hard or gambits or whatever. I recommend erring on the side of making it too easy because I think that's the sweet spot and always go for elegant simplicity. You don't need to muddle up with all of this subtlety. Subtlety is usually lost on people. So I would much rather have it be clear and concise, especially if you're on a timeline doing a marriage proposal, you're trying to thread this needle. Making it too hard, you run the risk of them being three hours too late. But making it too easy, you can always work on some gambit to slow them down. You can always do something to slow them down, but it's a little bit harder to speed them up. 
Keep in mind that puzzles are like a language. You do more puzzles and you get better at it. So know your player. Know that your player has never done an escape room, so you need to make this super simple and super clear. Or they've done a thousand escape rooms and you can probably throw the kitchen sink at them because they're gonna solve it. Finally, when you're building a puzzle, you can always just start with the full picture and just remove bits of information uh, until you find that sweet spot. And last but not least, if you are puzzle playtesting, don't hesitate to write down potential ways that your playtesters try to solve puzzles and build a puzzle based on that because some people have some kind of cool ideas and some creative ways of tackling it. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please let me know uh, if there's anything you'd like me to uh, cover. Uh, you can talk in the comments if there's anything you want me to cover next. Uh, Go ahead and join us on uh, the Constructed Adventures subreddit. It's a really active community of people that have questions and help. Um, they might have an idea. Sometimes it's a discussion. This is going to be one of the discussion posts. Uh, we have some cool announcements and we put together teams to tackle some puzzle hunts because some of the best ways to get better at creating adventures is to do adventures yourself. We do also have a Discord channel, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and it's a little bit more of kind of a live conversation. If you have a specific question, you can always come to the subreddit always come to the discord channel finally uh, if you are interested in doing something and you just need a little bit more help don't hesitate to reach out on my website i do consultation with individuals and corporations that are trying to build some type of event to make sure that you can run this thing and last but not least you can always reach out to hire me I fly around the world building these things uh, on a massive or sometimes not as massive level uh, just to try to take some really special day for you and make it spectacular. I hope this was helpful and until next time, happy adventure building.